You're listening to the Fitness Matters Podcast with Paula B, and this is episode number 20. Hello, hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Fitness Matters Podcast, where every week we talk about the fitness matters that matter to you. And I think, I mean, I I, I know this one matters to you. <laughs> this isn't even a guess anymore. At this point, we're on, you know, how many weeks of lockdown? And and I think I think that I think that today's topic dealing with uncertainty definitely matters to you. I know it matters to me and I know that I know that this is something that is so so big and so prevalent in our world right now and I'm if you've ever listened to the Fitness Matters podcast, you know that I love to feel grateful. I do. I love to feel grateful. And so when in doubt, I look for reasons to feel grateful. And and this current situation has actually given me lots of things to feel grateful about. And here's one of them. I I have not necessarily wanted to talk about dealing with uncertainty here on the podcast, but this current world situation has really asked me to think about how I think about anxiety, how I think about crazy situations, how I think about death, how I think about uncertainty, how I think about illness and the future and and all kinds of things. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity to think about and talk about and present to you some ideas about how to get through scary, uncertain times when we feel anxious and when things could go on for a while. I was actually having a conversation with my husband yesterday. Um, We were talking, I try really hard. This is kind of, I mean, it's on topic, but it's not entirely what we're talking about today, but I try really hard to limit myself. I I don't really watch the news at all. I'm extremely, extremely careful about what I take in um, so that I can manage my mind. And so I try very hard to, I visit a couple of websites. I go to the CDC and the WHO websites. I try very hard to look at numbers and obviously I understand that those numbers are human beings. I'm not trying to say that I'm cold-hearted about this, but what I am saying is that I try very hard to to distance myself from some of the news media and social media that is really bringing on panic and anxiety, and I try to focus on facts, and and I try to focus, I mean, again, like I said, on what I can be grateful for, what I can do to be my best during this time, what I can do to be safe, what I can do for other people to help them be safe. And just so you know, because I'm not a doctor, I am not going to offer you any kind of I'm not going to offer you any kind of medical advice, any kind of tips about, about anything, about keeping yourself physically safe. My, my milieu is much more about your mindset. I mean, that is what we talk about around here. It is about your fitness mindset and how much that matters. Feeling, feeling uncertain, it's not, it's not helpful and it's not, oh, in fact, I just realized that I never didn't finish my story about what I'm grateful for and what I was talking about with my husband. I was telling him that I'm so, I'm so grateful for the fact that I've been training for this kind of a situation for years. Being an ultra marathoner has really trained my mind how to think about situations that feel dire, that feel difficult, that feel like they're going on for a long time. I mean, we talked about this last week with the, you know, episode 19 about, you know, this is a marathon and not a sprint. And if you didn't listen to that, I will link it in the show notes. Um, Depending on what you're watching or listening, there's always a way to get to the links of anything that I reference in any episode. But so I was talking to you guys last week and to my husband yesterday about how how grateful I feel that I know I know how to look forward even when I feel 
awful. I know how to keep putting one foot in front of the other because, because I understand that all, all difficult situations will resolve themselves in one manner or another. I mean, in, at some point in time, this whole situation will be different. Not necessarily better, not the way it was, not, not any of those things, but it will be different than it is right now. And so that kind of does lead into what I'm talking about with dealing with uncertainty. I'm about to throw out a little, a little truth bomb here. No F-bombs today, no swearing, but a little truth bomb here. My friends, we are all kind of freaking out about, oh, things are so uncertain right now. And I want you to know that life is always uncertain, always. This right now is not any more uncertain than our lives always are. And I know you might be like, no, Paula, here's the thing. I, I know that I always have tacos on Tuesday, and so if today is Tuesday, I know I'm gonna have tacos. And the fact is, no, you don't. You think you're gonna have tacos. We make plans as though every Tuesday is always gonna be the same from now until the end of time, but something could always happen. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a killer virus. I mean, people could people could drop by and say, hey, let's go out for pizza. And you might go out for pizza on Tuesday instead of eating tacos. Even if you have already cooked the tacos, even if there is a taco on your plate, something could happen. The only time we know something is going to happen is after it's already happened. The, the only certainty that we have in the world is what is currently right this second right in front of us or something that has already occurred so when we're talking about how uncertain the future is and how how bad it could be and how terrible things could go and what numbers and what happens with the the financial world and jobs and money and this and that and everything those are all thoughts. And I know that we have talked about this before, when we have talked about facts versus opinions. And this, this specific situation feels so much more difficult to be able to parse out the difference between facts and opinions. And I know, I know that we do have some facts. There are things that have already happened. But as for what is going to happen in the future, we don't no. The future is always, always, and only a thought in our minds. No matter how real it feels, no matter how vivid it feels, no matter how clearly we think this is the trajectory of what is going to happen. There is a taco on my plate. It's in my hand. I'm about to put it in my mouth. But when that doorbell rings, something else could still happen. Now, here's the thing. This, this thought that we have about, I know what's going to happen, that is actually the beauty of our glorious brains. You guys, our brains are amazing. And I realize when I talk about our brains that sometimes I sound like I know something about our brains. And I have to tell you, I don't. I read a book really recently fascinating book. If you ever have any interest in reading a book about neuroscience, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't have thought that I was going to be super into it, but, but it is something that I am just so curious about. I'm, I'm so curious about the way that our brains work. And so I read this book and it was called The Psychopath Within. And it was talking, it was a, it was part memoir, part neuroscience, nonfiction, I mean, it was all nonfiction book about this man who is a brain scientist who discovers as part of some other research that he was doing, I think about Alzheimer's, if I remember correctly, he gets an MRI and discovers that his MRI shows that he shares a very similar characteristic that you can see during an MRI with psychopaths. <laughs> It was, it was such a good book, and I totally feel bad giving you this recommendation if you are interested in it, because um, I don't remember the author's name. It's called The Psychopath Within. I can't imagine that there are too many books with that title. I got it from my library. It was fascinating. I read it in like a day and a half. I mean, it was a really easy, but not easy, read. 
But anyway, I realized that sometimes I sound like, oh, I totally know how our brains work. Reading that book, I don't even scratch the surface. I don't even come close. I am probably sometimes completely off the mark and or just explaining things with these gross generalizations, but I'm going to continue to do so because here's what I understand and I haven't been proven wrong yet, <laughs> but here's what I understand about our glorious brains. The prefrontal cortex evolved to look for problems, solve them, and keep us safe. So this, this whole situation is exactly what your brain is supposed to be doing. There is a problem. I mean, it, your brain doesn't have to look very far to find a problem right now, especially if you are anywhere on TV or the internet. I mean, there is, there is very clearly a problem. Your brain wants to solve it and your brain wants to keep you safe. But sometimes, your brain having these, you know, this great vivid imagination, this ability to think into the future, to imagine the possibilities of the future, and to then solve future problems in order to keep you safe, sometimes your brain kind of gets stuck in that looking for problems phase. And in fact, I would venture to say that it gets stuck in that looking for problems phase for most of us a lot of the time. And some of that is, some of that is because of the media that we take in. And I, I apologize. I actually don't mean to be on some like anti-media rant today. That's that's not how I feel, and it's not really where I'm going with this. It, it is a clear part of our issue right now is that there is so much conversation everywhere about anxiety and uncertainty, those words and those phrases that bring up feelings for us. And so it's very easy for your brain, for all of our brains, to get stuck in the here's a problem and here's what could happen, here's a problem and here's what could happen, and kind of continue into like a worst case scenario. The fact is our brains are designed to do that. I mean, this is great news. If your brain looked at this situation and was like, well, there's no problem here, and then you went on about your business and nobody understood because you know our brains hadn't been evolved to to think about and solve problems. If we all just went about our business, you know, coughing and sneezing on each other and nobody washing their hands, we would probably at some point cease to exist as human beings. But because we are capable of saying, hey, here here's what we can do, here's what could happen next, and here's a likely, if not solution, at least part of a solution to help us get through this, you know, we, we, would, we wouldn't be where we are right now if we didn't have that ability. So your brain, your brain is just doing what it's supposed to do. And honestly, I have, I really only have two pieces of advice for you as far as dealing with uncertainty. And, and I do hope that, that understanding, understanding that life is always uncertain and understanding how your brain looks at uncertainty, I hope that that feels like like hope as opposed to, I mean, you know, that phrase, life is always uncertain, that, that might actually lead you down, you know, the worst case scenario path. And that's not where I'm trying to go with this today. Understanding that we always, always face uncertainty and we always get up in the morning and move through it, I hope that that feels very helpful to you. You've been moving through uncertainty your entire life. You have been training for this. You are capable of looking at this situation and saying, I'm going to keep putting one foot in front of another no matter how bad this seems right now because I know that that's all I can do. I'm going to keep moving forward. So step number one in my 
two steps to dealing with uncertainty is to honestly remind yourself that of course you should be freaking out. This is what your brain is supposed to do. This is actually your brain doing its job beautifully. You freaking out or feeling uncertain, feeling anxious, feeling scared, and feeling all of these feelings that we feel, that is your brain doing its job job. That is great news. That really is the foundation of solving problems. Being able to identify the problem and seeing that there is a problem is what your brain was designed to do. Your brain can see problems, it can solve for problems, and it wants to keep you safe. So everything that you are thinking and imagining and projecting right now That's your brain doing its awesome, amazing, fantastic brain job. You do, however, have to stop and kind of realize that. Because sometimes we do get so caught up in the the freaking out and the feeling of the feelings and the imagining of the tragedies and the, the hurtling down the worst case scenario path that we forget that it's just our brains. These are thoughts that our brain is having. And I realized that some of the thoughts, I know you're, I I can hear you arguing with me. (laughs) I can hear you arguing with me because I have the same argument with myself. I'm having these thoughts based on facts. So it's not just an opinion, but, but it is. When you are projecting into the future, if you are thinking about the future, you are having a thought. You are not having a fact. And so taking that that just half a breath, that half a step back, that half a second to simply remind yourself that these are thoughts and that this is your brain doing its job beautifully can really truly be the first step to feeling just a million times more calm. As soon as you as soon as you hear your brain thinking You take some of the sting out of the thoughts. You take some of the emotional charge out of the thoughts that you are having because you're you're simply observing the thoughts that you're having. You're not in them anymore. So taking that moment to observe can go a really, really long way toward dealing with uncertainty. And then, and then once you're capable of, of realizing, okay, these are thoughts, these are thoughts that I'm having, this is my brain doing its job, you can do step two, which is to practice using your fabulous, glorious imagination on other scenarios. Now, I, I understand that it's, if you are anything like me, it's really, 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 really easy to picture the worst case. It's really easy to go down the the negative thought path. And I'm not telling you, oh, only think, you know, sunshine and rainbows. That's totally not where I'm going with that. But what I am going to say is that when you can take that step back, you can be a little bit more analytical and a little bit more directed with your thoughts. There's a couple of questions that I ask myself. And I we have talked about this before. In fact, I will reference this and I will put a link in the show notes about the conversation that we had about the three best questions to ask yourself when you're struggling. And it's not, it's a variation on that theme, but during that episode, we talked about how asking yourself a question is one of the best things that you can do for your brain. Because again, your brain evolved to look for solutions. Your brain evolved to help you solve problems. So when you ask your brain really specific directed questions, you can receive back better answers or answers that don't make you feel anxious and overwhelmed and uncertain. So so one of the things that I ask myself is what else could happen? When I'm thinking to myself things like, I mean, I, this is so blunt, but I, I feel like I feel like it's probably what you're thinking too. Honestly, one of the things that always comes up for me is 
everybody could die. I mean, it's, it's just that thing. And then I go through all the people that I love and they could die and I start picturing it. And it's, that's, that's my imagination. I, I go immediately for that. And I, I kind of suspect that most of us do, which is why I bring it up. And if you haven't thought that, I apologize because I don't mean to put that in your mind, but, but here's my question. What else could happen? And when you ask yourself that, it opens you up to the possibility of imagining something else. Now, yes, you might be tempted to think of even more people that could die or more people that could be affected or more bad things that could happen. But at some point, your brain will kind of run out of ideas. I mean, there, there really is a saturation of bad things that could happen. And at some point, there will be something either kind of positive or actually positive or utterly ridiculous or, or whatever. So when you keep asking yourself that question, what else could happen? Eventually you come up with things like, well, unicorns could go running through the street and fish could, you know, fly through the air. You know, you'll come up with something crazy or ridiculous or, or whatever. And it'll help you realize that all of your projections could be ridiculous, could be outside the realm, could be not super likely. Again, we're taking that half a step back and reminding yourself that your brain can think all kinds of imaginative things. They all feel real and vivid. If you give yourself enough time to think about unicorns running through the street and fish flying through the air, you can see that. You can totally picture it. I, I, feel, like you, I feel like you are brushing the unicorn's mane in your mind because it is so realistic to you. This is the power of your brain. Ask yourself what else could happen. You might even ask it slightly more directly than that to get slightly more positive. Is there something good that could happen? Is there something different that could happen? Sometimes we don't want to go straight for good. And it's why I, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to shove positive thinking down your throat. It's not super helpful. If you're just you know, white knuckling these positive thoughts, like I'm going to think something good no matter what. It's not super helpful to you, but when you can organically picture and then imagine something that isn't dreadful, that isn't awful, that might be likely, maybe it's not super probable, but it could happen. It's a great way to get your brain to calm down, to not feel the anxiety and uncertainness, and to picture something, if not positive, at least different from the worst case scenario. The other thing that I ask myself, and I actually ask myself this one really frequently, not just, not just about like world events and terrible things happening, but sometimes when I find myself worrying about something kind of ridiculous or small or something that, that happens or used to happen. I, again, because I ask myself this question, it doesn't happen as often anymore. Sometimes when I'm falling asleep at night, I imagine this happens to you too. I'll replay a conversation in my mind that happened like 20 years ago. I mean, I mean, it's kind of silly how my brain will just call this up. Like, well, you know, I know you wanted to go to sleep, but hey, let's revisit that one time you said something really dumb. <laughs> I'm, I know this happens to you too. And so when my brain starts to do that, I think to myself, hey, that's my brain being my brain. Isn't it crazy how my brain wants to think this thought? And then I say to myself, if I can think anything in the world right now, because I can, what do I want to think about? And this is kind of a variation on my how do I want to feel? I love this one. What do I want to think? Because they're intrinsically related. How I want to feel is almost always grateful. And therefore, I have to think some kind of gratitude, thankful thought. So ask yourself, if I can think about anything in the world right now, what do I want to think about? And it doesn't mean that you are automatically not going to think about world events. It doesn't mean that you're not going to think about families and people and situations. But it means that it, you could think literally anything, or you could think more constructively, maybe more positively, maybe in a more helpful manner about the things that you're already thinking. 
When you think about what you want to think about, I'm assuming, I mean, this is a total assumption on my part. I'm assuming that you don't really want to spend a lot of time thinking about the economy or people dying or bad things. I'm assuming that you'd actually like to think at least occasionally about puppies and rainbows and unicorns with soft silky hair, right? So by asking yourself that question, you at least open yourself up to the possibility of thinking some good things. My my personal, like what I'm aiming for in the world, I, I'm never trying to tell myself that I can't think negative thoughts. I, I personally find that ridiculous. I, I'm never aiming to feel positive 100% of the time. I don't think it's possible. And I also don't think it's super helpful, truly. If we don't, I mean, <laughs> let's sing the theme song from the facts of life, right? You take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, and there you have the facts of life. Life isn't always good. It's just not. I mean, you know this from a very, very real sense. Bad things have happened to you. Good things have also happened to you. We're supposed to experience both of them. So rather than aiming for, I'm going to think positive thoughts all the time and that's what's going to get me through. What I try to do is if I'm going to have negative thoughts, then I would like to also have some positive thoughts. I try to give myself, if not an exact, you know, one to one ratio, at least some time in positivity so that I'm not constantly in the negativity or feeling like I'm constantly in the negativity. And that's, that's what I'm going to suggest for you. In much the same way that, I mean, I feel like we kind of talk about this when we're working out. If you do any of my, my full-length workouts with me, you know, I'm never, I don't see myself as somebody who has terrific balance, like both physically and metaphorically, just in general. I, I tend to, I tend to be a little bit extreme. I tend to go, you know, like I said, directly for the we're all going to die kind of scenario. Physically, I have a very difficult time with balance. And I have told you my story. And I, if you're new, then maybe you have not heard my story. About 10 years ago, I went to the sports medicine doctor because I was kind of constantly injured from running. And she was, you know, doing some tests, trying to figure out, okay, where, where might the problem be? And she asked me to stand on one foot and I almost immediately fell over. And she kind of laughed at me. She was like, well, I think we found the problem. You don't have very good balance. And, and she didn't laugh at me in a mean way. Trust me. It's, it's a funny story. It's funny to me also. Cause I mean, I fell over, <laughs> like I literally couldn't stand on one foot. And so over the past you know, 10, I mean, gosh, actually it's more than 10 years, 10 to 15 years, sometime, some rather large amount of time. I have really consistently worked on my balance. I work on it a little bit, a lot of times and have for years now. And I still wobble. I still fall. I'm still working on my balance, but I'm aware of it and I'm working on it. That's how I feel about trying to be positive. I'm aware of the fact that my brain is more than happy to freak out. It's very, very willing to feel uncertainty. It's very willing to feel anxiety. It's very willing to feel fear. I am aware of that and I'm working on balancing that out. I'm working on imagining what else could happen. If I could think anything in the world right now, what do I want to think about? I'm looking for things to think about that can make me feel grateful. I'm looking for things to think about that can help me not feel anxious and uncertain. That's, that's my advice for you. Don't be aiming for 100% positivity. Life is always uncertain, but it's not always good and it's not always bad. Remind yourself, I'm going to go over the two steps again. Remind yourself that freaking out is your brain being your brain and thank goodness your brain behaves that way. Otherwise, we probably would all die. <laughs> and number two, just practice using your fabulous imagination on other scenarios. If you can take the good and the bad, I mean, you take them both. And there we have dealing with uncertainty, <laughs> my friends. I hope, I mean... Okay, let me let me issue that final thing that I feel like I say every week, but I I am trying to take 
a practical and somewhat lighthearted look at this situation because I cannot offer you medical advice. I don't have any. Because I can't offer you much in the way of, of dealing with the physicalness of our current situation. I can help you find positives in your mindset. I can help you with your fitness mindset and how much it matters. And I do hope that when I'm making jokes and singing the facts of life, that it doesn't come off like I don't understand the gravity of the situation or like I'm not, uh, not sympathetic to the gravity of the situation. My hope is that we together can, can take the scary stuff and also take the positive stuff, take the good stuff together. And I always, always hope that it's helpful to you. So my friends, I want to know if you can think anything in the world right now, what do you want to think? I would love to know. I would love to know what you come up with for something that you would like to think right now when you're dealing with uncertainty. Make sure that you leave a comment. Come find me on social. You know, you know. Thank you so much for joining me this week. I'll talk to you again soon. Mm -hmm.